We've arrived at Troy. It's about five minutes away from the museum in the coach. This is a great map of the excavation layers of Troy and it looks like there were at least nine layers. The important positioning of the land of Troy meant that it was occupied for over 3,000 years. So there was Troy 1, Troy 2, right up to Troy 9 and they're all standing on top of each other. No one knows what they were actually called but archaeologists have labelled them that. Carbet's oh, killing heat here in, you know, real hot summer. This is the original city of Troy One. You can see the walls behind me. It might seem tiny, but this is a time when people were living in caves and trees and they built themselves a city. Not only was the harbour close, but this area got flooded more than once and they found lots of seashells around here. Mud bricks are the ones in the middle. They're the original ones. This is the door to a Trojan house. You can imagine this was the harbour wall and the ships were there that made Troy such a wealthy nation, but also destroyed Troy because the mud brought mosquitoes and the mosquitoes killed them with the malaria. In the early excavations, they basically cut a trench through the hill and they were looking for gold and stones and what they did was destroyed what was here. This wall is part of the fortification of Troy too and over there is the ramp that stopped people coming up into the city. The pots you can see behind me were found from Troy II and the pikes from the Romans in Troy IX. These are the legendary walls from Troy VI and if Helen did exist, she would have existed within these walls at that time. This stone is really tough, it's from 3,000 years ago. It was called man-killing stone. But then by the time the Romans came, they wanted to make things quick and easy so they used sandstone. So the Trojans were clever, they built two gates. The first one was down there and the second one was round the corner. So when the Romans came with a battering ram, they burst through the first gate, but then they couldn't get to the second gate because it was round the corner. So while they were faffing about, they killed them. So this was the palace in Troy VI and the harbour used to come right up to here and see how far away it is now. The Temple of Athena was built on top of the palace, but unfortunately that was destroyed in the earthquake. It was built of marble, but there is a ceiling stone that they found that we can show you.
So you can see the structure of the city walls and the width of them. And over there is where they've closed the gate. That's gate five. They were in fear of being attacked and they couldn't defend five gates. So that was one less to worry about. Away from Schillerman's destructive excavation, this is a much more modern excavation and you can see it's much more intact. This Odeon in Troy 9 was built on top of the fortification walls of Troy 3 and the statue that we saw of Hadrian in the museum they found just here. And this side of the footbridge are the remains of the Roman baths. So after they've been in the baths, they could go across to the Odeon, which was for VIPs only. This is the south gate of Troy 6 and the main entrance of the city. The engineering was amazing because they channeled the water away so the path didn't get muddy. This is the council chamber where they made all the decisions about Troy. Remember the old gag, how many people can you fit in the mini? Well, how many people do you think you can fit in there? This was in the film starring Brad Pitt and Eric Banner called Troy. Just guessing, but we reckon that front section dropped down and they all ran out. So if you don't actually make it to Troy, the next best thing is to come and visit the Trojan Horse and this model. We've just arrived at the Troy Museum. Let's take a look. It's worth saying that this museum was voted one of the top 10 archaeological museums in Europe. If you've come all this way, don't miss the great view from the roof.